Hello, Team Church. Welcome, everybody, to a Lead Pastors online meetup. So good to see everyone jumping on here today. For those of you who I haven't met yet, my name is Brandon Stewart. I have the honor of serving and helping lead Team Church. We're so glad you all are here today. And uh, as you're jumping on, take a minute and say hello in the chat. Let us know uh, where, you're, where you're coming from today. Uh, let us know your name. Say hello to everybody. Give a shout out. Let's make some noise on the chat. I uh, would love to um, see who all is joining us. Also, Pastor Kevin uh, is going to be talking with us today on reopening our churches. And um, we're excited to take some questions as well. So I want to encourage everybody to ask uh, some questions using the Q&A feature down below, or I think it's up above if you're uh, on a mobile device. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, okay, it's good to see Ben, Tony, Nathan, Lloyda, Courageous Church, uh, Kelly Sickle, Pastor Lincoln, our very own Pastor Lincoln, uh, Jeff, man, we got a bunch of people on here, uh, Daniel Gregory, must be tough being in Florida right now, uh, good to see you on here, um, Pastor Dan and Paige, Lord from St. Louis, uh, love that y'all are joining us, so glad you're here today, and uh, today we're going to have a conversation on reopening church. And hello, Pastor Kevin. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, hello, everybody. How are you? Sorry, it took me a second to grab that mute, <laughs> my, my, my unmute button. We, uh, happy, hey, happy Monday to all of you. We've all been there with the Zoom calls right now. This is our life right now. <laughs> Isn't it funny how, though, the day you and I were talking about it, Brandon, I don't know if everybody else feels this way. It feels like the day goes by really fast in quarantine and I can't believe sure it. How it works. Yeah. I can't believe it, but I am looking forward to a meeting, not in my attic. That's what I'm looking forward to is, uh, is a meeting, you know, like back at the office actually or something. So, uh, Amen. anyways, um, people are hopping on. I'm so glad you guys, uh, are joining us and staying up with us. Um, I want to let you know that at the end of the call, we're going to give out some information on this today. Uh, we're going to dive in here in just a second, but we have some information on um, a, a vendor and a, a distribution for disposable face masks uh, in bulk for your churches. If you would like information, if you don't know where to buy them from, um, a member of our church has, has found a, a vendor and he wanted me to offer it to lead pastors today. So um, we're going to email that information out. If you'd like to receive that, go ahead and leave an email in the chat. And uh, we will be sure to get that to you uh, today. And one more quick announcement, housekeeping, and then we'll get into it. Um, we have a new uh, Facebook group for all the lead pastors of Team Church. It's called the Team Church Lead Pastors Collab on uh, Facebook. We'd love to have you join us. That's where we're going to keep giving out information and announcements and announce these Zoom calls and whatnot in the future. So, um, so glad to have you here today. We got a group here. Um, man, lots of, lots of names, lots of emails. Okay. Pastor Kevin, let's chat for a bit today. And, um, I'm excited to talk about reopening church. No doubt it's the number one question on every lead pastor's mind. And I know you've been really active in this process, not only of course, for our church champion center, but also here in the state of Washington, as we navigate, you know, a very interesting, terrain. So I want to dive in and just ask you a first question. Go for it today because um, we have a lot to cover. Um, this past Friday, I think it was, you met with the Washington State governor and shared a plan uh, with them on how you felt churches could reopen in a smart way. And um, I love the way you phrased it, uh, sooner, smaller, safely. <laughs> a plan to reopen church. And I'd love if you would start us off today by just sharing with us a little bit of the plan and what you shared with our governor. And uh, we're going to unpack this today, how we can do it sooner, how we can do it smarter, smaller, sorry, and how we can do it more safely uh, for our communities. Yeah, you got to get, you got to get those S's right. A lot, of words, <laughs> a lot of words we could use. Uh, <laughs> but what happened here was that uh, some of you know, and I'm not sure all the states represented right now, but the state of Washington governor um, has been really quiet about churches, where we fit in, 
Um, we had to, you know, work really hard to figure out if we were allowed to go film or if we were just going to do it rogue, break the law, if we were allowed to go uh, part of our foundation to go, you know, help and support first responders and all the things we do in our community. So anyway, all the quietness and all the silence and all the, has just pretty much continued in our churches and we've done petitions and tried to figure things out. Bottom line is, is that uh, about two weeks ago now, I guess 10 days ago, the governor did release a, a reopening of our state in four phases uh, document. And again, church is not mentioned at all. So what we did was they, uh, they contacted me and asked me, someone from the governor's office uh, about our plans to reopen and they were gathering some information because there were lawsuits coming against the governor, a lot of pressure being applied, et cetera, et cetera. And what I did with that is that I sent them the plan that we're going to share with you guys and my approach that I felt like was the best for our state, but I actually feel like it's definitely the best for us. I can't speak for everybody across the country, but that is that the constitution supports us uh, opening up in the exact same way that our state opens up as far as, and yours as well, you know, restaurants and bars and theaters. So what I did was I just started with that in mind and I used the idea that we wanted to start sooner where the governor was thinking, well, out there somewhere alongside Seahawk games, you know, we'll reopen churches. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that's unconstitutional. So sooner uh, is, is right for us and doing it smaller allows us to actually be safer. So the concept was as soon as restaurants can open up at 50%, then churches should be given the same opportunity to open up at 50, I'm sorry, at 25%, which is level two in phase Washington. We're in level one now. So next phase, uh, we'll, we'll, restaurants will be opening at 25% capacity. So we just laid out a plan that coincided with his plan for reopening the state, restaurants, theaters, and bars. And that kind of a dynamic, because we knew that we were within our constitutional rights. And so that's what the whole conversation was about and my presentation. But I actually, just for this conversation, I actually believe that wh whether your governor's okay with it, your state's okay with it, I think that some thought should be given to the idea of not waiting until later and just having a big come back to church party at a point where you may not really know at that, you know, what, at, when that will be or how well equipped you'll be to handle it. So I know there's some people talking about a, you know, a big celebration. I'm going to wait until we can all come back and we can come back like we used to come back or like we used to have church. And we're not thinking that way. And I would just encourage everybody to consider the idea that you can do both. You don't, you don't have to wait. Like you can actually do both. And I would say that for us, I want to have a big party too. We like parties. So, so we want to, we want to do the big deal too. Uh, whether we call it, you know, comeback weekend or whatever where, but, but we're going to do it after and down the road after we have walked out a process of, of sooner, smaller, safer. And we have given people confidence that are going to be reluctant and hesitant. There's risk tolerance is different for everyone. So our idea is my thought is that let's go with the idea that not everyone's going to want to come when you open at 25% and at 50%. And if you need to add services, of course, add them. But by opening up sooner, and smaller, you get a chance to actually manage in a safer way and be better prepared uh, in a way that will, that will gain favor in the, in the community, that will gain people's confidence who want to come to your church. 
while you continue, I would say, while you continue to keep the main attention, if you have an online service that's going well, by all means, keep the focus there during the season, but begin to open up church sooner, smaller, safer. So that's, that's kind of what we presented to uh, our governor. That was our recommendation, not just for our church, but for our churches across the state. Yeah. And I thought it was great. I thought it was well, well written. Um, we are going to make that available uh, today. It's a two or three page document. So if you haven't already left us your email address in the chat, please feel free uh, to do that. And we will send that information, that plan out as well. Um, it, it's very succinct. It'll, it'll give some information as well on, um, you know, masks and, you know, hand washing, you know, and, and some of those kind of things, a, a touchless service essentially. Um, so I thought that was really well done. Pastor, I feel like you've, you've talked to us a little bit about Sooner, you know, Sooner being a focus on, um, you know, maybe uh, focus on building capacity size versus, you know, large gatherings. Let's uh, talk for a minute about smaller. Uh, do you plan to go right after a weekend service or do you, do you plan another kind of environment or, or see another kind of environment as being like a first gathering for us? Yeah, I, I want to start in another setting. Um, whether it's a night of worship, whether it's a capture event for the weekend, I think there's some options on how you go about it. But I would like to offer something that's not the Sunday morning setting, um, in the beginning at least, and start off with that. Um, we're, we're used to doing that, and it can actually – what we call a capture event, it can be quite fun, you know, for a group, a smaller group of people. Um, we don't open it up, you know, to everybody. It's done kind of, most of our church would be surprised to find out actually that we do capture events because people don't know about it. But it's more of the insider group, people that volunteer on weekends, all of that. We'll invite them to a capture event um, that we then use on the weekend, my message and so forth. So that's kind of what it looks like in our world. But I also like night of worship for us um, as part of our coming back into a building, um, a time where we can just really come together and have a worship setting, a worship experience. Uh, I think people are really hungry to be in an environment where they can look across the room or look behind them, around them, in front of them, and see people with hands up. And just that physical uh, closeness again, and potentially communion can be served in a setting like that. Um, you know, just the, the, the opportunity of what we call night of worship uh, is something that we'll probably do as well. So I think you can arrange it in different ways. But again, those would be starting off at 25%. Uh, and then phase three, it would be 50% capacity to the, the, the building at our various locations, obviously, the rooms are different sizes. So we would do it at 25%, 50%. And all of that, again, is a, is a way of going sooner and smaller and safer. Because I'm not really sure, guys, how long it's going to take. And I don't think anybody is for people at large to feel comfortable coming and things like you know, being greeted at the door, at the parking lot, um, children's ministries, when, when all of that will become comfortable again is really unknown. And I think it's, there's definitely people at, at both ends of the, some are really eager right now, others are really reluctant right now. So I would just say for us, we want to, eat, we want to come into it this way because when the day comes, where people are like, no, I want to go to church. And there's a large group of people like that. I don't know what kind of um, safety we'll still need to have in place. And I think by us using it and utilizing it in smaller groups, we'll be more ready for the large group when it does happen. I love that you brought this up. And I'm going to get some questions um, going to you in just a minute on timing. Before we get there, though, you, you brought up the safe factor and people's perception of safety. I mean, let's be honest, we have some major divides right now. Uh, there, there's people that, that just 
do not feel safe. They'd probably even be mad that we're opening, you know, even in the next couple of months. So you, you, you have, you have that going on. You also have that. We have this question actually come in uh, from Shane. You know, we have um, parents of young children. So you have, you have, you know, okay, I, I feel fine about church opening, but I've got young children in my house and children's ministry. So even when we do choose the right timing, we have to get language right. We have to consider the, you know, the, the fear factor that's out there that's real. How do you plan to address, I think, some of those aspects of people's fear of regathering? I don't want any condemnation on people. Uh, in this process. So for us, I don't know, you know, everyone, again, if you're happy with your online and it's going well, I say happy. If you feel like you're putting out, you know, a service that your people are favorable towards and you're, you're feeling like you, you can tell, I think by your financial support, the participation, et cetera, then I would just say to you, don't rush Sunday mornings coming back uh, because you do have people who are reluctant and continue to let them without any, any sense of you're, you're pushing them prematurely to make a decision to come back to the physical location. Uh, I, I feel like people are all going to need to get that, you know, within their own timing. But again, how do you help them? You help them by going before them. You help them by being a leader. You, you don't help them by playing into, you know, their fears. You help them by going ahead of them and going ahead and opening the doors and going ahead and creating atmospheres and environments for those who are ready to come back to the location. And then for me, I mean, I, I want to, my book that was released, I feel like is going to come in really handy for us. So we're talking about how do we utilize naked and unafraid to help awaken people to the opportunity that we actually have. Uh, It's funny how we can read our Bible and we can read about all these great heroes of faith, you know, in the Bible. And we're like, yeah. And then we have an opportunity like this to where we're faced with some challenges, you know, of, of mind games. And am I afraid of this situation? And the actual application of that becomes, as we all know, a lot more difficult than celebrating what a hero did in the Bible. And I, and I just think this is a time without creating condemnation. It's also a time for us to minister to people uh, in a way that we help lead them along. We help them. They, wanna, they don't want to be afraid. People don't want to be bound by fear. They, they don't want to they don't want to be that person. Believers want to have faith in God. And the disciples, as we all, I mean, they even asked them, Lord, help us. Like, we want to have faith, you know. So increasing faith along the way is our responsibility as church leaders. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to create condemnation, and I want to create a pathway back for them that is not rushed. One thing I also feel like you've done so well in our church over the time of the course of time is you, you focus people on loving the church, you know, and you focus people on that versus political or social divides. I feel like this particularly happens at election times. You know, we, we, we don't get into the trenches of right or left or red or blue. We, we offer people another way of thinking. And I think we're going to have to do that here because there's some very divided opinions and I just think we're going to, you do it so well. And I'd love if you'd maybe speak to that. You just always call people back to the church and our mission and don't get caught into the, the, um, you know, the ditch on either side, so to speak. Yeah. Which, which becomes really interesting in this season because of some of my social media, some of the television sound bites from the news and all that with me kind of coming against, you know, coming against the, the, the governor's, hesitations in our state to address churches. It's kind of interesting that you would say that because some people think that I've always kind of, you know, been on, but I've not, I've, I've all, you know, complete opposite. I've not wanted to get entangled with red and blue and all the political stuff. Um, so I'm trying to thread that needle of what you're talking about is standing up for the church 
that's really what this is about. It's about standing up for the, the, the church of Jesus and allowing the church to continue to function without being overlooked or ignored in our value to heal, to bring strength. People have, we're dealing with a lot of, everybody knows that's watching today, we're dealing with um, people that are having mental breakdowns right now. We're, ha- we're dealing with a whole new uh, anxiety and, and uh, fears. And, and so, so today is our day, is my point. And so we got to stand up for the value of the church while at the same time not going to the ditch on either side. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I want to talk about timing for a minute, if that's okay, PK. Yeah. And I'd love to ask you a couple questions on timing and, and you know, understanding all of our states are different. All, all parts of the country are different at this point. Um, my first question would be, when do you feel like it's the right time for a church to reopen or gather again? I, I feel like every church that's, um, that's here today, I feel like every church needs to really – Find your own your own time, and what I mean by that is that I've heard and been invited by others. Uh, hey, should we all come back on the same day? And while I think there's some value to that, and there's churches that are doing that, my concern is that there's churches that are doing that out of peer pressure and not really considering their readiness to come back. And I think every church is different. I think there's churches that could be ready, volunteer wise, and so forth you know, this coming weekend. I know our friend Pace Hartfield uh, is got a Tuesday service tomorrow night. He's opening up the doors with a limited amount of seats. And I'm going like, go Pace, go. But what I appreciate about Pace is that he's measuring out his ability, his readiness. He's doing it on a Tuesday night um, instead of, you know, a weekend. And I think every church just needs to ask yourself, what's our timeline and, and began to look at some indicators. Let me, let me just give you a few of those indicators. First of all, um, how are you doing with online? That's one of them, because if you're not doing well, you're going to have a sense and a need to get back for potentially quicker. Um, secondly, the laws. I mentioned that the laws having to do with your state, with restaurants. That's a good equivalent, by the way, is restaurants and, and bars and movie theaters not not sporting events don't don't get sucked into that we are not comparable to a sporting event right so don't don't let anybody compare you to that like like that is leisure that is fun <laughs> and we all love it but food is a better comparison where do people go to get food these days and so anyway uh, so is i guess movie theaters is leisure and fun but I'm going to go for the front end of the idea that we are essential. So at what point does your state allow you to come back? Consider that. And I would say whether they want you to or not, I would say that if you want to come back at the same rate, come back. Like whether the state says you can or not, I have friends around the country right now. Governors are hedging. They're holding back. They're not giving permission, and those churches are saying, we're going to go on our timeline, not the governor's timeline, because we have a constitutional right. So we're not trying to go against our state, but we are going to go with our constitutional right in the United States, and that's a faster pace than what we're being given by our state. So again, it's back to when you're ready, um, using that as another template and another gauge, and then just preparation would be the the next one is start something sooner like we've talked about and smaller so that you can monitor and manage it as a pastor. Think of yourself as being responsible for the safety of the people as they come. And if you'll just put that on and then get your volunteer team mobilized. And if you have the ability with your volunteers to offer those safety uh, elements coming back, I would just say use those as your timeline, not someone else's. Don't get caught up in a, you know, big, like we're all coming back on the same day. That's my advice. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. And if mine lands at the same time as other people, absolutely. Yep. But 
you know, I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. I, I, I would just encourage you that the right time is when it's right for you based on some of the things that I just described. We had a question come in from Richard um, ahead of time on our RSVP form um, about staff redeployment. I thought this was really good. And I'd love to just hear your thoughts on staff, obviously. And we, we talked about this on our first call like this, how on day one, you know, you brought the staff into one room and basically said, everyone's online staff now, you know, and, and, and that's been so necessary. Well, talk to us about staff redeployment now that we're possibly starting to turn and headed back the other direction. Do you see staff retaining some online responsibilities and, you know, physical gathering responsibilities? I would just love any and all thoughts you have on how to lead our staff during this time. Yeah, for, for us, online is never going back to what it was. And we're, uh, we're putting uh, online in a whole new position up front. And we're going to do everything through the lens of online. And we've got, I won't start sharing it right now, but we've got our own vocabulary and handles, verbal handles that we're rolling out to describe um, the new value that we place on the online location from here on. And I'm, we're just really grateful and thankful for that. Now, as far as the staff goes, what I would say is that the next thing that staff needs to all come on board to is what we're talking about. What does comeback day involve and look like? And not just the day, the weeks or months ahead of a comeback. And I would say don't, don't allow or don't, don't feel inhibited as a pastor or leader to reassign people. So, for example, if you have people working in children's ministry and maybe they're doing online services during the week, but you're going to do some, you know, you got to trump, you got you to gotta trump things up. You got to get things going, going for the, uh, the gathering back to church then just don't hesitate on saying to the children's team, hey, guys, I need you to actually help us um, with the management of the safety applications as it applies in the parking lot, at the doorways, in the auditorium, all the things that we're rolling out. Like, go ahead and put some of your best people or on your staff in charge of some of those safety regulations and get everyone on the same page. So that's what I – reassigning staff – needs to be all hands on deck to church as it is right now, as it applies today, not as it used to be. So good. Um, let's talk again about another aspect of smaller, and that would be this. And we had a couple questions come in ahead of time on this. Um, have we lost momentum during this? I mean, you know, what what can we expect in terms of, when people do come back, you know, and we're obviously we're doing small on purpose to be safe, but you know, what if there there's, if, if engagement has in some way changed in people's lives or momentum has changed, I'd love to know how you're thinking about that and how we can set our minds. I guess I heard someone say along the line last couple of weeks, everyone's a church planter again, you know, everyone, everyone is building again now. And, um, Maybe let us in on your thinking on, on regaining momentum. Yeah, I, I don't think we've lost momentum. And there may be exceptions to that. But I really feel like that in our church and the churches I'm familiar with, and I'm asking specific questions to pastor friends of mine, and I feel like that we can be really proud of the church and how strong that it has shown up in this season. I don't feel like the church has lost momentum. Having said that, I do believe that this all plays into and, and affects people's moods and mindset. And I think that we all have to understand that people need to be led. And so one of our, one of our past uh, times that we were on here with a webinar, we talked about leading through a crisis and I, I would just say that if you do feel anything, you're probably going to feel maybe a, a hesitation, a lack of direction, 
people not, you know, people are disoriented right now, but I don't feel like that you should allow yourself to think it, it's really applies toward their support of the church and their readiness to actually come back in alongside you in building the church. It's more of what people are just dealing with at a personal level. And that's why we as leaders, the, the better we can position ourselves and understand who we are for people in this season and get that right and really lead from the front, not the back. Um, again, not with condemnation, not with guilt, but with courage. I believe that everything else in this season, in a matter of time, I mean, we're just going to be back, I believe, stronger than ever. Um, we'll know at the end of this year or, you know, eight, ten months from now, maybe we'll know some of the losses uh, in, greater, in a greater way. Uh, I don't want to pretend there haven't been some, but I do believe, like right now, I feel like that online uh, and, and everything that we're doing, there's a fatigue with the Zoom meetings. There's a fatigue with online church. There's a lot of that for this season that is definitely going to begin to drop and decline. I'm, I'm not taking that personal, and I don't think that's a good indicator of people's love for the church and desire to actually be back in church. I just think they're dealing with a lot of, you know, mental, uh, mind monsters, moods, uh, low feelings, discouragement, anxiety, whatever it might be. And we're going to have to address that, and we're going to have to lead people through that. Um, so that, that's my thought on it. And, and I hope you'll ignore, those of you who are watching, I hope you'll ignore some of maybe the drop that you might have on your online attendance, for, for example, right now. The, the decline maybe having to do with finances. I hope you can overlook that as being associated with people actually being, having a desire to be with you and to get back to building church and understand that it's not about that. It's just that they need you as a leader to help them come along and get there. And they will, if we will. Absolutely. I believe it. Um, we've had a couple practical questions come in a couple regarding um, the way church could look when we regather. And I'll let you speak to that if you'd like, meaning, you know, how do we approach it safely and whatnot? I will remind everybody, we are going to send out a, a two to three page document with a plan that we presented to the Washington state governor. If anyone would like to receive that, you could put your, um, email in the chat and we will get it to you. And that's pretty specific as to um, safety and, and sanitation and, you know, whatnot, reservations and those kinds of things. So if you'd like that, we can send it. But we did have this question come in, PK, that I would love for you to answer just really, really practical. So when we go, when, you, when we do start to uh, do weekends again at Champion Center, however, you know, small or what size they might be, do you see us you know, doing services live that are broadcast or will you still pre-record a service during the week for online? How, how do you see uh, preparing you know, your message, filming your message or doing it live in that kind of a context? Well, like, like I said, um, Brandon, I, we've already been doing captures and a lot of our church can't really tell the difference in terms of my message. I personally like to preach to a crowd and I like to speak to a live audience. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess maybe everyone does. Um, at the same time, I'm, I feel like I'm learning better right now some things about communication uh, that I hope benefits people outside of the room, whether it's our other locations and so forth, or just out in the online world. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to do more um, recordings and captures, but I'll do those with people in the room uh, as much as possible, just because I, I tend to flow better and feel more comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, probably, probably do it more, but I'll still be capturing live settings on the weekend 
and doing live connection with the other locations and so forth. That's the plan right now. Right. Um, I think we're about ready to land the plane here in a couple of minutes and I'll, I'll maybe give you the last word here just to encourage some pastors, but I know maybe if we can just go to a personal note for a second, um, you mentioned things like zoom fatigue, you know, and all that pastors themselves personally are fighting the good fight of faith right now. And, you know, we're leading in very unprecedented times. I'd love if maybe you'd just help us land this conversation just by talking and to some pastors directly and building up their faith and their confidence in this season. Because I, I think we tend to believe that God is doing something so good right now. We just have to have eyes to see it in this season. So maybe we could just end by just you talking to some pastors on a personal note right now. Well, I, I do feel like that. I mean, you touched on it right there. Jesus said, if your, your, your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. And if your eyes are bad, your body will be full of darkness. And that certainly applies to us as much as it does anybody else right now. So I would just encourage all of my pastor friends out there, those of you in church leadership, to understand and know that although this is the worst of times in some ways, it really is the best of times in other ways. And that the kingdom is, is retooling right now. And the kingdom of God is in a time where we feel like maybe is a setback. The kingdom of God is actually diversifying its strengths in ways that are going to help us to fulfill the Great Commission um, sooner, better, quicker, faster, uh, and more unified than ever before. And so our job is not to just encourage others, but obviously to encourage one another. And I hope you'll do that. I hope that all of you pastors who are a part of this today, that you're not isolated from relationship. Um, I hope that you have people to connect with. And I hope that you're doing that and you're active in it and supporting one another and encouraging one another. Our best days really are ahead of us. I, I expect that, that as we close out this year, I really do expect that we're going to see a, a buildup of momentum. And I will not at all be surprised. I really feel like that next year is going to be unprecedented in many, many ways. Um, I, I, I just really believe that through all of this, that we are developing muscles and we are getting strong in ways that is not really visible uh, yet, but we're going to show through tenacity, through strength, through unity um, in our communities and in our states, we're going to show up in big ways in the future. Your church is going to do well. Uh, and I hope, I just hope you receive that today and walk in that faith and have that confidence that not only are we going to make it, like we're going to thrive. We're, we're going to get beyond this season into a season of harvest, into a season of blessings and good things. So that's, that's really, that's how I feel today. I'm glad you led me into that, by the way. You know, I, I love to talk to pastors and encourage myself when I encourage you. Um, but that's, that's our future. It's good. I believe it. I believe it. And I'm going to have you pray over everybody here in just a second. Um, but before we do, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Also, I'll let you know, we're not ready to make any announcements quite yet. We are talking about Team Church um, this summer and fall, of course, we, we, you know, as of today, there's a, there's a conference on the calendar and all of that is an active conversation. We will be sharing information soon on what direction we're going to head. We're being really prayerful and strategic on it right now. And we can't wait to update you soon on, I think, how we plan to look at our own gatherings, you know, for our own tribe. So thank you, Pastor Kevin, for some wisdom today. Uh, would you just pray, pray over our pastors and our churches before we leave today. Absolutely. God, thank you today for the privilege that we have of serving you, leading in your kingdom. Pray God for every man, every woman, every church represented today and ask you to continue to guide us and lead us. Pray God that you would be with us uh, as we wrap up one season, transition to the next season. Um, Lord, I pray that we would have wisdom and guidance and direction in this transition. Pray God that our leadership um, would be uh, accepted and received and that the favor of God and man um, would be a part uh, and a testament 
to this next season of transition that we're in. Can't wait, Lord, to be back in buildings, but we're also thankful for everything that we've gained through this process. We give you glory for it. We give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We love you. We're with you, heart and soul, and uh, look forward to seeing y'all again soon. Bless you guys. Have a great, great week.